welcome all participants meeting will be started in another 5 minutes please invite all your friends who have joined or registered for this program you can share this youtube link in your classmates or college mates or your friends group and ask them to join we're going to start in couple of madam we can start madam hello everyone i would like to welcome all our participants to the second day python bootcamp yesterday we all had a great learning experience and we have got 6000 plus active participants so i hope today also everyone will provide your support and actively participate in the event now i would like to call mr sai satish sir to start the today's session yeah thank you very much yeah hi all participants myself sai satish welcome to the second day program so today we are going to see some more important topics the first thing is math library second is conditions and string functions these are the three important things we are going to see today yesterday we have seen how to take input from a user and how to do simple calculations 
on that particular input and providing output. That's the basic thing we have seen. Hope you remember. And around uh, 1100 members submitted assignment in Instagram. Uh, tomorrow we are going to share a link to you. You can submit your assignments tomorrow, day three. Okay, now let us jump into the session. The first one, what we have to remember is documentation. The much time you invest on documentation, the less time you will spend on debugging. I think you know the difference between invest, uh, investment as well as debugging. So it's better, always better to invest time on documentation. Documentation will tell you what, which is right, which is not right, and how to use a specific function, and what is the return type, how many parameters will take, and all these information will be there in the documentation. So for any programmer, you have to check the documentation. Just search with the word called documentation. I'm sharing my screen now. Please have a look over it. Yep. This is a Python documentation. Almost all the classes information, libraries information, methods parameters, return types, all the information will be available in this documentation. So for namesake, let us open one of the most important one called string. How to play with the strings. So these are the different kind of methods you can use to play with string. As usual, let's go ahead with our collab. From tomorrow onwards, we are going to see some advanced topics like open CV. So generally we work on this particular uh, deep learning concepts. So tomorrow I'll show you some important concepts related to open CV, very, very important one. Okay, so let's go ahead and select the first file, new notebook. Shall we start with math library or strings? Which one do you like? Hope you remember what is string. Your name is a string. Your city name is a string. Whatever the words I'm using, that is also a string. Shall we play with strings or mathematics? How many of you like English or mathematics? Do you like English? Yes, this is a question, right? Uh, for these type of questions, you'll have the answers like yes, no. Remember, yesterday we have discussed three data types, string, integer, float. Now for a few questions, there will be answers like yes or no, true or false, binary answers, one or zero. Such type of things will be called as Boolean. Are you getting a point? Now you, you're getting the fourth data type. Tomorrow we are, we are going to see some more. I don't want to mess your brain with uh, different kind of data data types on the first day itself. Yesterday we have seen integers. What is integer? General number. What is float? For example, if someone asks you your uh, height, you may say 5.7 inches or 5.9 inches. 5. Point, sorry, not inches. Okay, 5.9 feet. Okay. So if you say 5.9 feet, it's not integer, right? 5.9 it is called as float if someone if someone asks you exact number 55 63 such type of uh, where there is no need to use dot something they can be considered in integer strings or generalized words okay uh, let's start with uh, generally i like mathematics maybe you don't know uh, maybe some of you don't like mathematics it's okay so we'll go ahead with mathematics Yesterday we have seen taking inputs, two inputs, A and B, and adding them, and uh, providing result we have seen, right? Do you remember it? Yep, let me show you that. Int equal to A equal to input of some number, okay? Uh, B equal to also input of something. And uh, what we're doing, we're just adding that to C. And we have to typecast it. Do you remember the typecasting? Int of A plus int of B. Here we, we are using one operator, arithmetic operator. Here equal to is called assignment operator. Remember this. 
you no need to use like this also if you want to assign something you can also perform like this a comma b equal to 33 comma 44 55 you can mention like this also but these type of things are not available in other programming languages like java right so this is one of the additional feature you can enjoy in python yeah such type of many things are there in python where such type of things are not available for other programming languages. So I ask you to remember the thing called documentation. For math also, documentation is there. So what kind of operations it can do? Always remember the website called W3Schools, Timothy's, a worldwide web inventor. So remember W3Schools, they are providing plenty of uh, functions which are related to Python. Here also in direct documentation also, you can see all those functions, methods, and other information. Uh, just go ahead with W3 schools. Here you can try. Uh, no, hold on. Python math library. Python math library. Yep. When you're performing something, Okay, let's not discuss minimum, maximum, uh, these things. Hold on for a couple of seconds because we have not touched these type of uh, things yet. Forget about it. We'll see some basic things like uh, sine, cos, square root, and other information. If you already know some programming languages, when you want to do some, when you want to import some additional libraries, we use in C, C++ generally, we know how to use, right? hash include will be used. If you take uh, C sharp, there is a word called using. For Java, we use import. Same for, five, same for Python, we use the word called import. Import the library name, okay? Then we can use all the methods which are available, all the classes which are available in that particular library. So here you can see in Import math. So generally, additional we can do, not an issue. Uh, directly with our simple things, we can go ahead with plus. But how about for some little complex things like tan, cos, and other things? At that time, we have to import something. So this is what we have dis uh, discussed yesterday. And we can print that C. Uh, it will come. It will ask the input from the user. It will typecast and it will print. This is what we have completed yesterday. Today we'll go to a little bit advanced. 44, 66. Okay, we got the answer. Now we are take. We are going to do with cos, tan, some trigonometric operations. How many of you completed basic calculator yesterday? I told you I got 1,100 screenshots, but around 7,000 participants are there. So I don't know how many others have completed. No issues. Tomorrow we'll share one link to you. You can upload all the details tomorrow. Yep. Now, let's start with sine, tan, and other things. A equal to, say, 45. But before that, when you are using any kind of uh, library functions, we have to import it. Remember the word called import. And also remember, Python is case sensitive. We should not use capital I. Most of you are using mobile keyboards. I have seen around 50% uh, of the people are compiling all these things from their mobile. Online compilers are there. Online Python compiler, compilers, plenty of online compilers are there. Uh, your keyboard initially suggests capital letter in the first word, right? If you use capital I import, it won't work. It is case sensitive. So we have to go with normal import. Then again, not capital M. It is small m, m a t h. Here you can notice something popping up, right? This is called as intelligence, not intelligence, intelligence. So we can use this type of intelligence for IDs. Some of the some people are using Notepad, Notepad plus plus also. Yes, you can use that also for typing your program. But such type of intelligence will not be available if you use the IDs like PyCharm or Visual Studio. Yeah, this is my Visual Studio code. Actually, I'm just upgrading your uh, uh, these things like uh, 
your id cards are there right just up, updating it okay if you use uh, visual studio then also all the libraries all the classes methods will be pop up in a form of intelligence yep just let me type that so what's the second way we have to calculate some sign value cos value of a okay how to do it just type print let's print math dot now where is the pop-up these pop-ups will be available in most of the ids some ids will not pop up we have to wait yes come here math dot seal floor and here square root hold on in this documentation they're not providing let's go ahead with cos generally a sign a cos will be available okay okay in this page they are not providing that information anyways directly we can jump into the documentation and we can find math library math documentation yeah can you notice here seal of and factorial floor documentation is very very important seriously if you invest less time on this then you're going to in, you have to invest much time on debugging invest quality time on documentation yes logarithm log to plenty of things are there see here the trigonometric functions are available arc sign yes here is our function sine of x and it is returning sine of x radians you can notice here so what we are going to do math dot sign of a we are going to type and it will be printed let us see math dot sign of a now hit control enter it will show you sign of 45 this is a value in radians so you can use all these things sine cos square root sqrt Oh, forget about double three schools for some time let's uh, stick to documentation see here now your first assignment is to play with library math library that's the first thing got it first assignment play with log yesterday we just seen how to multiply addition and other things today little bit trigonometric stuff I am not asking you to calculate. Python will calculate. Don't worry. You just give the input. That's it. Python will take care of the job. That interpreter will take care of the job. No issues. Yep. Second, we'll play with some strings here. A equal to Indian servers. You can use double quotes or single quote or double double quotes. Or triple single quotes also you can use here. A, a equal to Indian servers. For int a, what will be the output? As usual, Indian servers. We are going to slice this strings and we are going to use some functions on the strings. One important thing we are going to discuss today related to strings called regex. Pay attention. Yes. So this is our string. So we are going to slice this. This is by default, every string is an array. Don't worry if you don't know what is an array. Don't worry. But remember, every string is called array. Array means we are going to store the sequential similar data types. This is array of uh, in zeroth position, I will be there. First position, N will be there. In the third position, I will be there. Zero. Array starts with zero not with one zero one two three four five like that will be stored for example students array of students means your classmates you're one student mm, okay let me tell you if you want to store names student names what we have to use 
A equal to your name, B equal to your friend name, C equal to someone's name. Like that, we have to store. But if I don't want to do like that, if I want to store all your names, then what we'll do is we'll create a list and we'll store in that particular list. Tomorrow, we are going to see what is a list, how to use the list, how to manipulate the list. Tomorrow, we are going to see no issues. But as of now, just keep this new word called array in your mind. Array starts with zero. It's a similar data types will be stored in this array. Just keep this in your mind. Now, if I type A, it will be it's printing like that. Now, see what it is going to print. A. If you type like this, the output. I told you A array starts with zero. Array starts with zero. See here, it is just printing the first character. It is one of the important things we are going to play with. We are going to see the thing called slice, slicing. We can slice, we can cut this whole string into pieces. Zero means it is printing. Same way, here S is minus one from last. This R is minus two, minus three, E is minus three. Okay, now just check, check. you can also use minus. Can you see? S is printing here. Now, how to slice more? I want to print from the zeroth character to the last character, but not last character. Like that, also, we can mention zeroth character, but not the last character, up to last character. See, it is not printing the last character. Up to last character will print, but not the last character. Minus one. Here, if you use colon, it's a new one, right? No issues for slicing. This is also important one. When you want to slice, you can use like this colon zero to minus one. Okay, I want to print from the fifth character to last character, but not last character. Control enter. See how it is printing. So hope you're getting how to slice the strings. There are some functions are available like substring if you want to extract some part of the string you can use slice anytime you can convert this to upper case you can convert this to all characters to lower case you can play with this somebody gave me a challenge long back he said he will give a poem uh, 19 uh, sorry not 19 1640s literature almost 400 500 years back literature then the task is we have to take that input and we have to find uh, the total number of words used, total number of unique words used in the particular textbook. And what are the most used words? The top 10 used words in 19, uh, sorry, 1680 and 1980, as well as in this decade. We have to figure out the input will be different kind of ebooks. We have to list the all the words, how many words they have used, how many unique words they have used, what are the top 10 words used in 1600 AD, 1700 AD, and right now. Like that, one person gave me a task. So for that also, you can use array concept to find the substrings, to find the string count, as well as we can find all the words can be put in array, and we can find, we can loop it. Tomorrow we are going to see loops also, no issues. Uh, so hold on for a couple of seconds. I, I hope uh, it's working perfectly in YouTube. Some persons are saying voice is breaking. I think it's working fine in YouTube also. Okay, so this is the one slicing. Now we are going, we are going with methods of functions for string. Okay, are you ready? String functions. Yes, let us take a string now. String s equal to Indian servers. Now I want to convert all these things to uppercase. So let us see what our documentation says. Just come to here and search for your string. Here it is. Always depend on documentation, no issues, depend on documentation. 
see here forget about formatter as of now we are going to discuss format in coming days this is also one of the good things you can try in python just see the documentation here even some comparisons are also available comparisons yep let us start this so fine right fine with the documentation let us start this string also now i want to convert this to upper so how to find just control f dpp just upper is a function you can try case this is math library Let's come to upper see here string dot ascii dot upper it will convert okay let's start with this uh, but before that let me show you one more called split print of split all charge something b equal to a equal to s dot split and let me print a it's splitting the whole sentence or the whole string into multiple things based upon the space value let me add some more now we are going to get four words split is the first function you can try okay like this many functions are there they are just in a distance of research you can try this next point uh, i want to add um, substring is there lower uh, upper case since uh, upper case is there let me show you a few more yeah if i don't want to split with space you can try comma now here we have to mention how you want to split this comma now it will be split into two words yes here you can notice the split value is comma okay now let's try with lower okay same s dot lower see here i have mentioned capital i in india they are becoming lower right so this is how you can use the lower function same way we have upper also how this upper will work just it will convert everything to upper case lower and upper always remember the documentation one of the important things you can try documentation upper everything is getting converted to upper next um, you can split into multiple parts we have already seen that one and you can combine more number of strings and we can also check whether that particular method is completely in lower case or in upper case for those if functions are available is upper is numeric and yeah here it is the written type, written type for them is will be boolean hope you remember what is boolean boolean will gives only s or no true or false value okay so we'll check whether it is lower or not with the help of is lower function 
is lower. The return type for this particular function will be S or no. Okay. Now it is not completely lower. Some capital letters are also there. That's why it's going to return false. See here. It is returning false. Now is upper. Let us check whether it is completely upper or not. Is. Here you can mention is alpha numeric. Is alpha, is ASCII, decimal, digital. Plenty of uh, methods are there. Just explore this. Use the intelligence too. Is upper. False. Now let me convert all the things to lower. Capital I and small, sorry, small i, small s, small i, as well as small b. Now let us check whether it is uh, lower or not. But if you're from Java background, generally for methods we use capital L here. Remember if you're from Java background, but in Python we're not like doing like that. It's all small letters. Yeah, now it is saying true all our small letters. We can also check if somebody mentions uh, some alphabets in phone number. We can check whether it is alpha num uh, numeric number or not, whether it contains any space or not. Such type of things are also available. Just depend on documentation. Got it? Just explore what kind of things are available. We can also find uh, whether a specific string exists in that particular thing or not. For example, if you have a long string like this, if you want to check whether servers exist in that particular string or not, that also one more function is called find. One more thing called find. Huge paragraph is there, okay? In that we want to filter whether our required or important word is there or not. Then you can find, you can use the word called find. Find, S -E, uh, use double quotes. S-E-R-V-E-R-S. Here also it's going to give us whether it exists or not. True or false, Boolean value it's going to give us. Yes, sorry, integer value it's giving us starting where it will be started. That portion is there. Yep. So now we are going to the third point, the third uh, stuff. Checking the conditions. If elif, one of the most important things, then you can concentrate on uh, your assignments. Yep. If condition, they are called as conditions. For example, if the input is uh, equal to something, then we have to print one kind of output. If input is different, then we'll print some other output. That is the thing we are going to try. If conditions, we are going to try now. Okay. So let us take some random values, A equal to some 78. If, remember, if it is not capital IF, it is small IF, again, remember this. If A is uh, greater than, yesterday we have seen equal to, right? Equal to is also, for assignment we can use equal to. For comparisons also we can use uh, this type of equal to, double equal to. Double equal to you remember in most of the programming languages, right? Uh, in Java, we use double equal to, double equal to for comparison, just checking whether it is equal or not. So here also we use comparison. Here, single equal to assignment, double equal to comparison, okay? We'll discuss double equal to in a couple of seconds. Uh, just see, if A is greater than 70 colon, hit enter, see here, something additional space got created. Remember this. This is called as indentation. Very, very important thing for Python. Indentation. If you don't give this indentation, it's going to throw some error. It's very, very important to give indentation. That means if this condition satisfies whatever should be executed, that will be have the same indentation level. That means single space for all those lines or doubles. If you give double space, double space for all those lines, 
if it is tab tab for all those lines whatever the function gets satisfied then we have to provide that logic here so if uh, a is greater than 70 print greater than 70 okay you no need to use semicolon here semicolon no need to use for other programming language you are habituated with semicolon let me hit control enter it is greater than 70 if condition if it is uh, 28 let us change the value let, let us see how it works now no output is there argument point now no output is there of course you can directly jump like this also not an issue you can mention everything in the single line also that's one of the things you can try in java okay so later in some programming languages you heard about else if here we call it as elif 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 not just complete word called else if else if is for c c plus plus java c sharp we use else if completely but here in python we use elif okay if it is uh, not greater than 70 let's check if greater than 50 then what to do we have to mention call here what to do print greater than 50 okay at last if you want to mention the last if this doesn't satisfy then it won't execute if this condition satisfies this will be executed once this will be executed it will come back to the next line not this line because uh, it's already satisfied so no need to execute the other things it won't be executed other things okay so let me go with 58 let me change the value to 58 and let's see the output now greater than 50 but less than 70. Are you getting the functions here? I mean, conditions here? If, elif. First, we have seen if. If, check the value, check the condition, colon. If that satisfies, execute this code, this block of code. If this doesn't satisfy, check the next one. Yes. If this satisfies, then execute this code. Next, if no, nothing got satisfied, then what we have to do? Here you can also mention else. Else, colon. What we have to do? Print less than 50. Okay. Generally, I'm also habituated to enter semicolon in the last line. But if you enter semicolon, and then it will throw some errors. So semicolon is not there here, should not use it. Control enter, but less than 70. Now, if you change the value to 28, let us see what happens. The final else block got printed, got it? So today's learning, what's the today's learning? We have seen how to use math library. First thing we have to import the math library. I'm just repeating today only three tasks for you, three learnings only. I don't want to bombard with a lot of subject. You have to do a lot many exercises. You have to do, I just gave you an example of sign. You have to do with tan, you have to do with uh, cause, you have to do with uh, a sign, you have to do with square root, you have to do with logarithm. Okay, so first thing just play with mathematics or math library. That's the first assignment. Play with the different kind of libraries. Second task, slice your string functions. How to slice? Array, your, all strings will be considered as array only. Array starts with zero. So here, i is zero, zeroth position, okay? Zero, one, two, like this if you want to slice a five one zero one two 
3, 4, 5. From here, fifth position up to the last but one position. Minus one means it won't be printed. Up to one, it will be printed. It, from back onwards, minus one will be considered. Minus one, minus two, minus three. It will be considered from back. So just play with the slices. Slice the strings. After that, this is the second one what we have seen today. What kind of functions are there? Come to documentation. Always depend on documentation. What kind of functions are there? Lower case, upper case, whether it is digit or not. And uh, to find to find a specific word in a given huge string. All those things you can try with this. Just check the documentation. W3 schools are also there. You can find string functions in it. Just play with some functions of strings. After that, what we have seen, this is very, very important one. Conditions. Conditions, if something satisfies, then execute the code of block. This code of block must be, must have indentation. What is indentation? Here, single space or double space or a tab. And if this condition satisfies, then this block will be printed. Got it? And if this condition don't satisfy, then it will check elif. If this condition satisfies, this will be printed. Same thing, you can check like this completely. So this is for today's session. I hope you have, uh, yeah, the assignment for this also, just uh, take some input from the user and combine them, uh, add the particular input. If it reaches to some point like 70 or 80, mention the total value is more than 70 or 80, something you can, something like that you can mention. So that's all for today's session. Thank you for joining today's session. Get ready with your assignments. Tomorrow you have to upload the assignments. So today, mainly, Three assignments are there. One is related to math library. Play with that. Second is slicing the strings. And the third one is use the functions in your program. If, elif, else. Okay. Thank you for joining today's session. See you tomorrow.